Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code. This is called Total Cost to Hire K Workers. It's from Leak Code 75, a great playlist if you are interview prepping. I have that entire playlist linked down below if you do want to check it out. So, what are we being asked? You were given a zero indexed integer array cost where cost of I is the cost of hiring the ith worker. You were also given two integers, K and candidates. We want to hire exactly K workers according to the following rules. You will run K sessions and hire exactly one worker in each session for a total of K workers. And in each hiring session, choose the worker with the lowest cost from either the first candidate's workers or the last candidate's workers. So candidates is just a number, say it's five. That means we're gonna choose the lowest from the first five or the last five. And we'll just break the tie by using the smallest index. So in this example, if you have three, two, seven, seven, one, two, candidates is two, we wanna pick from the first two or the last two. So between three, two, or one, two. Here, the smallest would be one. So that's going to be our first round pick. It's going to be the cost of one. Then we still wanna continue choosing from the front two or the back two. So it's still going to be three, two for the front. But since we picked one here, the next back two would be seven and two. So between these, both of these are two in here and here, but the smallest index is the two over here. So this is our next worker that we're gonna choose for a cost of two. And if there are fewer than candidates workers remaining, choose the worker with the lowest cost among them, break the tie by the smallest index. A worker can only be chosen once. Return the total cost to hire exactly K workers. So example one, this is our cost input. K is three, we're gonna run three rounds, choosing one worker every time for a total of three workers. And candidates is four. So we're going to basically be picking from the front four and the back four. So between these indices over here and the cost that we see, what is the lowest cost we wanna pick? That's going to be this two over here. We have another two, but this is the smaller index. So we're gonna take that two for a total so far of a cost of two. Now, this was our first round. We still have two more rounds to do. So for our second round, we still wanna pick from the front four and the back four. The front four is now going to include this seven since we can't consider two anymore. So it's going to be seven, 10, 12, 17, and the back is going to be the same, 2, 11, 28. So here, the smallest amongst these options is this two over here. So our total cost now goes up to four, the two from the previous pick and the two from our own pick. Now, our front four and our last four, where do they end? The front ends over here and the back ends over here. So since we did pick this two, this not only has three remaining, we wanna include that next back end of four to pick from, but there are no more numbers for us to pick from. It's going to overlap the front four and the back four. So we're just going to pick within whatever we have left. And over here, the smallest number is going to be seven. So our total is going to be two plus two plus seven, which is going to be 11. So example two, we have costs being the following array. We have three rounds to do, and we're gonna pick from the first three and the last three of candidates. The first three are going to be one, two, four. Now for the last three, we would technically be at two, four, one, but we're gonna have a repeat of two, four, and we don't want that. So we know the front three are going to be one, two, four. We're just going to take the max of the index after the front, so this one onwards, or candidates minus the length of cost, right? We should have started from two, four, one, but we wanna go after where our front has ended. So we're gonna start one onwards, and that's the only thing we're gonna include. So we're considering amongst four choices. So within these four choices, the smallest cost is going to be one. And we want to take the smallest index to break the tie. So we're taking this one here for a total cost of one. We still need to run two more rounds. So we're just choosing between whatever we have left. That's going to be this one. And then we only have two more left. So picking between the two and four, we're going to pick two. So our total cost is going to be one plus one plus two, which is four. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we're actually given exactly what we need in order to solve this. We're told what we need to do. We're just going to mimic that behavior as we code it up. Say I have the following input example. This is my cost array. K is four, we wanna run four rounds and we're gonna pick between the first two and the last two. Now we know we wanna choose the smallest cost. So how do we keep everything sorted so we always get the next smallest cost every single round? Well, that's going to be through a use of a heap. So what we wanna do is import heap. So I'm just gonna import heap Q. And I'm gonna go ahead and initialize that. So heap is going to be empty. Also going to initialize our total cost that we wanna return in the end. So total cost is going to be zero. Now, I know I want to consider the first two and the last two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and populate the heap, pushing the last two and the front two. So for I in range candidates, I'm gonna do heap Q dot heap 
push we're pushing onto this heap and what are we pushing on we're pushing on the cost but we want to make a tuple with the cost as well as the index with a heap we're going to get the smallest value by that first index so with the cost but if there is a tie it's going to use that next index to tie break it and that's why we're using indices because that's exactly what we want to do we're going to break the tie by the smallest index so we're pushing onto this heap cost of i as well as index i so right now, what are we doing? Heap is empty, total cost is zero. We're looping through for a range of candidates. So we're looping through up until two. We start off at index zero. We are pushing onto this heap that we have here, a tuple of cost of i, so what we have at index zero, which is one, followed by the index. So heap is going to get one, zero. We go back in this for loop. We're now at index one. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just going to push cost of i and i into the heap. So we're pushing on for one, and this is always going to be in sorted order. Now that we have these two pushed on, we want to push on the back two. But there is an edge case we want to consider here. Say we had something like example two, right? We want to start after that front range of candidates has ended. So let's just keep track of where we've ended. So front end is going to equal index i, where we've actually ended. This is going to mark the end of the front number of candidates we're considering. And now we want to do the same thing for our back end. So where are we starting off from the back? Over here in the front, we're starting from index zero, going up until not including candidates. For the back end, so back end is going to equal the max of front end plus one. We want to start after we've already ended our front considerations, or it's just going to be the length of costs minus candidates. So length of cost right now is going to be six. We have six numbers in here. Candidates is two. Six minus two is four. So this over here is going to be index four. And we just want to make sure it's after where we've ended in the front. Front was ending at index four. So we're going to take the max, right? So as long as we are at index two or onwards, we're okay for our back end to start. So our back end is going to start over at index four. It's going to go with the max. So back end is now going to start at index four. So now when we loop through, we're going to do four J in range of back end to length of costs. And we're doing the same thing, right? Heap Q dot heap push onto the heap. And we are going to add a tuple of cost of I and I. So what would this look like? Back end we know right now is index four looping through up until the length of cost. So up until not including index six, we are in this for loop. J starts at index four and we're pushing onto our heap the cost at i, which is one, followed by the index. So we're pushing onto our heap, one comma four. Then we go back in this for loop. We're now at index five. We're pushing on cost of i, which is three, and the index, which is five, so three comma five. So now that we're out of this for loop, we have our first candidates and our last candidates in this heap that we want to consider. Now is the easy part. We just need to run round k times. So while k is greater than zero, while there are still rounds we need to run, we're just going to pop off from heap and that's automatically going to give us the smallest cost tie broken by the index. So we're going to get cost and the index by popping from heap. So heap q dot heap pop from heap. Now we want to take this cost and add that to our total cost. So total cost plus equals cost. And we're also going to subtract from k to mark the fact that we are in a round right now and there's going to be one less round to do in the future. So right now, what does this look like? Cost is going to be one and i is going to be zero. So we just pop this off from the heap. Cost is one, i is zero. We're adding cost to total cost. So this is going to go up by one. K minus equals one. I'm going to rewrite k over here so we can still remember what our original input was, but k is now going to be three. There are only three more rounds we need to run. So now what's going to be next? We just took this as our cost and we know we still want the front two and the back two. So we need to decide how we're going to incorporate another element in our heap. In order to do this, we need to check which index our cost was from. Was it from the back end or the front end? And based on that, we're going to expand either from the back end or the front end. So if front end is less than back end minus one, right? These haven't merged yet. So there are still more elements we can bring into our heap. If this is the case, then we want to see where i is from. If i is less than equal to front end, then we know the cost we're taking is from this front half. And in order to still get the first two candidates, we need to expand out our front end. So it's going to be front end plus equals one. And we're just going to push it onto our heap. So heap q dot heap push into heap. What are we pushing on? Cost of front end and the index of front end. So right now in this case, i was zero. Front end is less than back end minus one. And i is less than equal to front end. Front end was one. 
and i is equal to zero. That means we got something from here. So front end is going to move down to index two because we just added one to front end. And now we're going to push this onto our heap. So heap is going to get the cost at front end index, so eight, and followed by the index, which is two. So it's going to be eight comma two. And if this wasn't the case, so else, we're going to do the exact opposite. Back end minus equals one. We're going to expand out from the back toward the middle. And heap q dot heap push onto heap a tuple of cost of back end followed by the actual index. So we had just gone in this if, which means we're not going in this else, but we're going to go back in our while loop because k is greater than zero. So going back in this while loop one more time, we pop off from our heap. And remember, we're still considering our first two and our last two in our array. This one's already picked. So now the first two are going to be four, eight, and the back two are going to be one, three. Popping off from heap, we're going to get the next smallest cost, which is going to be one, four. It's this one over here, which means cost is one and our index is four. We're just going to add cost to our total cost, which is going to go up to two and we're decreasing K. So now there are only two more rounds we need to run. Front end is less than back end minus one. They haven't merged. We can still incorporate new elements. So if I is less than equal to front end, I is four, front end is two. So that's not true, which means we're in this else because we had gotten this element over here. We got it from the back, which means we want to prep for our next round and take the last two elements again in our array. So we're just going to push that on, right? We're in this else. We move back end down by one. It's now at index three and just pushing this onto our heap. We're pushing on the tuple of two and three. So two and three has been pushed on. Going back in this while loop, k is still greater than zero. We pop. So cost is going to be two and index is going to be three. We update total cost. So it's going to go up to four. K minus equals one. We only have one more round to do. And front end is no longer less than back end minus one, right? There are no more elements for us to include. We sort of included all of them in our heap. There's nothing else for us to add on. So we're not going to go in anything over here. And we're just going back in this while loop. So going in here again, we're popping off from heap to get that next smallest cost. So popping this off, our cost is three, index is five. We update total cost, which is now going to be seven, subtract from K. There are no more rounds we need to run. Front end is still not less than back in minus one. So we're out of this while loop and all we now need to do is just return our total cost, which is seven. So one plus one plus two plus three is going to give us seven. And let's go ahead and submit this. We are getting a runtime error, can't access local variable cost. It's because this should have been cost. Let me make that update everywhere. Cost and cost. Now let's go ahead and submit this. We're getting the wrong answer. Let's see what's going on over here. Going through this line by line. Oh, this actually should have been J. We are looping through with J, but then we're still using I for some reason. This is J. Okay, now let's go ahead and submit this. And now it is accepted. So we just went ahead and solved total cost to hire K workers. If you have any questions with this whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I'll answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.